bad legal takes. What's going on y'all, Attorney Tom here. In today's video, I'm going to be exploring the home of the keyboard warrior, Twitter. Specifically, on Twitter, there's an account called at bad legal takes. So let's take a look at some bad legal takes. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to say the worst legal take for last. I got the knowledge hammer ready. Who do you know so much about hammers? Let's jump right into it. Avenatti might be the best lawyer in US history. For anybody who doesn't know, that guy is currently in jail for trying to extort Nike. He literally thought he had so much political power and sway that he literally threatened Nike that their stock would tank if they didn't give in to his demands. There's only one lawyer in this country that has that much sway. Who's that? Attorney. And that's me. And that's because I'm the highest ranked living lawyer on famous birthdays. Robert Kardashian is the only lawyer ranked ahead of me, but I'm coming for that spot. No big deal, just most famous living lawyer. It's whatever. Be humble. Innocent people show proof they are innocent. Pleading the fifth means you don't want to get caught lying. No! He gets a knowledge hammer. Mm. That is such a stupid take, and it's a very common take, and it drives me crazy when I see keyboard warriors doing this. It is the government's burden to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Their job to prove. You don't need to prove your innocence. They need to prove your guilt. And newsflash, the prosecutorial mind can make anyone or anything seem guilty. We fundamentally cannot have a system where it is our burden to prove our innocence because innocence is almost impossible to prove. The burden must always be on the state. America. Absolutely spot on legal take. Don't talk to the police. Anything you say can and may be used against you in the court of law. Shut the f up. Not if someone made up something about you. Without your side of the story, you may be arrested and never get the chance to tell your side of the story. Okay, so here's the deal. If somebody is going to make up something about you, just fabricate a story. It is very realistic that that could create reasonable suspicion or maybe even probable cause. Maybe you get investigated by the police. Maybe you even get arrested. Maybe you even get charged. But remember, it's the state's burden to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you are guilty. And guess what? Talking to the police without a lawyer can only hurt you. It is extremely short-sighted. A pro tip is that if the police are coming to your house to arrest you, there is nothing you can say to talk your way out of it. They are going to arrest you no matter what. Hire a lawyer, shut the f up, and you'll have your day in court. Oh, wait, there's more to this. Face palm. I have a law degree, and I've saved people's jobs because they talk to the police. You, on the other hand, look at your life or your education and rational thinking skills. God, I hope you didn't have kids. Wow. I'm just gonna say it. I don't think that guy actually has a law degree. I've never heard a lawyer say you should talk to the police. Moving on. You can't extort anyone over something that isn't true. Tell that to Michael Avenatti. <laughs> Got he. Taylor Swift to face trial and shake it off copyright case. You don't face trial in civil matters. It's a judgment, not a prosecution. What? This guy is this guy is mixing up so many terminologies. First of all, absolutely you go to trial in civil matters. I'm a civil trial lawyer. That's my job. That's my job. A judgment is simply a possible result of the case. For instance, you get a verdict of X amount of dollars. The judge signs that verdict and makes it a judgment. You know what? Just, he gets a knowledge hammer. I hired an attorney last month for five years of targeted harassment and discrimination that Twitter has done to me. That my attorney says section 230 does not protect Twitter. Twitter cannot make rules and then apply them to some and not others. Criminal corrupt platform. This is my 12th account. I lost my main account in 2017 after seven years and 212K followers. Since then, I can't get to 3,500 without being banned nonstop shadow banned, which hides my comments and tweets from others, which is also illegal tactic violating your same rights. I will win. Bro, 
I hate to break it to you. If your lawyer is telling you that, your lawyer's ripping you off. He's just trying to charge you a ton of money. Section 230 applies to Twitter. And as the law is written right now in 2021, they can ban people's accounts because they want to. I'm not saying that's how things should be done. I'm just saying that is what is done. Twitter's a private company. You are using their private service. I'm not even going to slap this guy with old reliable. It doesn't depend. This is a case you're going to lose. Tell me an academic horror story. I used a professor's faculty photo in a slide deck for a presentation I was giving that talked about her and she threatened to sue me for copyright infringement for use of the photo. But that incident spawned a bad legal take, legendary. Okay, yeah, that's absolutely hilarious and that's a bad legal take for a couple of reasons. First, it could be very well that the faculty member doesn't even own that photo. If the university paid for that photo to be done to put on their website, it's not like this professor took out a copyright on that specific photo. It might even be property of the universities. Second, even if it is her photo, it was put on her public website, her faculty page, and was used in a presentation talking about her. So at the very least, that is almost certainly fair use. Want to learn everything? Surprise, it's on the computer. Now your phone's a computer. I signed up for that class action lawsuit against the media. I'm keeping a copy of all my failed tweets. Good evidence that they aren't letting them get posted. <laughs> this always amazes me. People think that class actions are just magical and they appear out of nowhere. What the hell is a class action against the media? First and foremost, suing entities 101. Who are your defendants? What is your cause of action? And what are your damages? The defendants as the media doesn't make any sense. Twitter's not a private company. It is publicly traded. <laughs> Twitter's not a private company. It is publicly traded. Twitter is in the gray area between capitalism and socialism called a mixed economy. <laughs> You serious? So while Twitter is publicly traded, she is clearly using the wrong definition of public. It is a publicly traded company, but it is still a private company. It is held by public shareholders, public stockholders, but it is not public in the sense that it is owned by the government. That is what makes something a public entity. For instance, a national park that is owned by the federal government. It is public land. Another example would be the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation, or better known as Freddie Mac. That is a public company because it is literally owned by the United States government. Folks, pleading the fifth is not a get out of jail free card, but it is an admission of guilt. I will not tell you I did what I did. Ah! Isn't that cute? But it's wrong! Your choice to invoke the fifth amendment cannot be used against you in court. A prosecutor cannot get up and say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendant just hid behind his lawyer. He refused to answer our questions because he knows he is guilty. That is absolutely inappropriate. That is probably grounds for a mistrial right away. Your right to remain silent cannot be used against you. Remember that. Legal Hammer. Wow. Kyle Rittenhouse is starting to sue all the celebrities and news stations for all the lies they spread about him, and it makes me happy. Wait until the families of victims sue him for assault and wrongful death. Now that will be fun. They can't. Double Jeopardy rule. I, I, I lost on Jeopardy. So Double Jeopardy would not apply here. Wrongful death and assault are civil torts, which the families can bring. I'm not discussing the merits of those. This isn't a video about that keyboard warriors, but a lawsuit could be brought for wrongful death and assault civilly. And even though Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted, that lawsuit can still be brought. And finally, it's time for the worst legal take of them all. But before we get to that, I just want to say thank you all so much. My goal is always to make content worthy of your time. And in case anybody wants to, I... Uh, uh, nope. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just makes me sick to say this. I actually tweeted for the first time in about two years this past week, and I'm going to try growing my Twitter. Ugh. It makes me sick to even say that. So check me out, Attorney Tom, on Twitter if you want. Dance, dance 
Can you make a male babysitter pay child support? I'm a single mom going to college with my sister. We currently rent an apartment together. A couple weeks ago, I asked my neighbor, a trustworthy guy, if he could watch the kids for two hours while I went to class and my sister wasn't home. And he agreed. If he babysits and doesn't accept pay, can I sue him for child support because he took on a fatherly role? I'm sure I can convince a court that he accepted a fatherly role. <laughs> This is by far the worst legal take of the day. What an evil thing to even think. First of all, that is not going to work. Child support is for the actual parent. This guy is not the parent and he's helping you out. He's being a trustworthy babysitter of your children. And not only do you want him not to accept payment, you want to sue him for child support? What? I think we all know what's coming. He's a catastrophic injury attorney who accidentally became a YouTuber. Attorney Tom.